Happy to be joined by now top 10 UFC flyweight Steve Ursek, who's coming off of a great knockout win over Matt Chanel this past Saturday at UFC Fight Night 238. Steve, congratulations on the win, and I appreciate you joining me. How's it going? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, going well. Obviously, still on a bit of a high, but uh, yeah, feel good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And you haven't even been in the UFC for a year, and here you are, top 10 flyweight. Uh, writing a lot of momentum i saw a lot of people throwing your name when it comes to like title picture and stuff like that has this all been pretty wild for you i know you had a lot of experience before you came into the usc and you were highly touted but did you imagine that would happen so fast no nah, definitely not i mean obviously i believe in my skills and all that sort of thing but you expect to fight um the lower level guys maybe get three fights there first and then fight a top 15 guy so to have it all happen very fast i mean it's awesome because um, I want to get to the title as fast as I can, but definitely not expected. And yeah, because like you said, I know you're supposed to be on the contender series and you get thrown kind of right with the top guys right away. So when that happened, were, did you feel like, were there any questions in your head or did you know that you were going to be ready for this and, and it was going to lead to this this quickly? I mean, there's always questions in your head. Like I think fighters are naturally a little bit delusional. So we believe that we're the best in the world probably when we're not and all that sort of thing. But um, it sort of, yeah, it all got validated pretty quickly for me. Um, and, yeah, the more I fight, the bigger my ego and my head gets and the better I think I am. So, yeah, it's getting dangerous. Well, yeah, I'm sure your ego's gotten a lot bigger <laughs> after this past Saturday. Uh, beautiful knockout. I know a lot of people know you for your grappling. You have had knockdowns, to be fair. Uh, you know, I've, I've seen your prior fights before the UFC. You've had knockdowns. They lead to the submissions. But to have that clean walk-off KO bonus to go with it. That must have felt good, right? Yeah, it was awesome. Um, like you think about those types of types of knockouts um, when you look over or when you think about fighting and uh, being on the big stage and, yeah, to actually have it happen, uh, kind of surreal. And, yeah, I did – I was happy that I didn't have to hit him again because he is a really nice guy and I wanted to do as little damage as possible. So, um, yeah. And I was reading an interview you did with UFC.com where you said you feel like the fight could go one of two ways. You either get him down to the mat or a slugfest, but you'd rather it wasn't a slugfest. It ended <laughs> up being kind of a slugfest. Uh, yeah. Obviously, you got your hand raised. So uh, why did you not want it to be a slugfest? Are you just talking about based off of damage? Like you didn't want to go out, go out there and take a ton of damage? Yeah, it's less so to do with like taking damage, although that is part of it, but more so that I want to show how technically good I am. So if I can go in a fight and completely pick apart an opponent without taking any damage, without getting touched, like that I think is the ultimate goal. Um, I feel like fighters should be tough naturally. And so it doesn't necessarily prove as much if you go out there and just start swinging with a guy and then whoever's, yeah, just see who's standing at the end. It's just, I don't think it proves less. I think it's um, yeah more impressive to go out there and look as clean as possible. But, I mean, finishes bring a lot of momentum. This is your first UFC finish. You were impressive in your other two fights, and you did pick up some steam. But a finish just it, it's adds that extra little momentum bump, right? And, and especially looking at the flyweight uh, title picture right now, it seems as though flyweight champion Pantoja wants to fight at UFC 301 in May in Brazil, kind of looking for an opponent. Uh, because he's in that kind of stage uh, where he want, where I guess the UFC also want him to find that card. I've seen people throw your name in even as well. They said, <laughs> why not Steve Ersing? They said he looked yeah. very impressive. So when you hear that kind of stuff, uh, what, how does that make you feel? Yeah, like obviously it's awesome. Um, it is super fast. But again, I told you I wanted to be into a title as fast as I can. And um, yeah, I assume they're probably going to give it to Makayev even off of his poor performance just because that's what Pantoja asked for. Um, but if they call me, I mean, I'm going to step up. I'm here to show that, yeah, I'm the best fighter in the world. So two days, eight days, five weeks, whatever it is, I'll, I'll show up and put on a show. And you mentioned the Mokayev there, because uh, I after your fight, he hadn't fought yet. So you were saying, you know, kind of depending on his performance, you just called it a poor performance. So tell me a little <laughs> bit more of what you thought of, of, of how he did. Um, he obviously has very good wrestling. And once he was on the leg, Prez did a good job to stop some of the things he was doing. But like you saw the peak outs, you saw like the high crotch where he like swings his arm around. And like he has good 
wrestling and like um, uh, sequences. But as he got tired, his entries looked poor. Like he just started dropping to the floor. He got comfortable sitting in front of headlock. His striking, I assume, is usually effective because people are so worried about his takedown game. Um, technically, it looked <laughs> very average. Um, I just think, yeah, it's, it showed a lot of holes for him. He is 23. He's going to get heaps better, but, yeah, he looks very average. So after your comments on his performance, you think he still gets the title shot? Uh, probably. Like, people like... People like uh, Instagram followers and stuff like that. So I was looking at the picture and he got like 1.1 million. And it's probably still the bigger fight, but um, I think Pantoja kills him. And I'll ask you about that in a second, but there's Brandon Royval as well, who's campaigning uh, for that fight. He's coming off of a close win over Brandon Moreno. What did you think of his performance? And if it is between Royval and Mokayev, you think Mokayev should get over him? Yeah, I mean, Revival has done more, has looked better. I don't know how he'd go against Makai of the wrestling. Revival hasn't necessarily shown that he's good at stopping takedown. He's dangerous off his back and that sort of thing, but he doesn't have the best takedown defense. But um, he just fought Pantoja. So I don't, like, that was his, oh, that was Pantoja's last fight. So I don't need to say that again. He's already beaten him twice. He beat Moreno three times. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to see it again. Not for a while. And yeah, because that this is where, where you come in and that's why it's so great that you had that kind of performance, right? Because I feel like the flyweight division is in need of new blood and, and timing is everything in this sport, right? So when you talk about, you know, Mokaya's performance, when you talk about, you know, Royva, we've already seen that. The flyweight, the top of the flyweight, we've seen a lot of rematches, trilogies, quadrilogies yes. and all that stuff. So how far do you feel like you are from potentially a title fight? I know you said if they call you in May, you'd, you'd be ready to go. But if they don't, how far do you feel like you are from a title shot? I, mean, I really feel like if they give me Moreno, which is what I asked for, um, or even Reval, I, I'm literally one away from a title. I beat one of those guys and all of a sudden, I think the other guys at the top of the division are either injured or they've missed weight or they're just like – controversy surrounding all of those guys. So I beat Moreno or Reval, all of a sudden I'm fighting for the title next. I just don't see another way around it. You asking for Moreno, is it simply because he's a former champion? He's been up there. Um, like I know he's won the title loss and all that stuff, but for you, you feel like that's pretty clear that if you beat him, you get him, you get a title shot. Yeah. hundred percent. Like I know that he has lost two in a row, but he's lost against Pantoja and Reval. So it's not like, the worst losses and they were like five round fights so and it's just an exciting fight like he goes forward he's got good boxing he's gonna fight for five rounds it's, it's exciting i want fun exciting fights i think that's what everybody wants i don't want to have a stand there look at each other for two and a half rounds and then maybe get a takedown and it's just that's boring as so we can get in there and have a scrap and find out who's the toughest person in the world that's what i want to do I'm assuming he's going to want to fight as a sphere, or at least the UFC is going to want him there. But, I mean, I was talking to Robert Whitaker, and he's mentioning August Perth. I'm sure that would be great for you. So, uh, ideally, where I mean, I'm sure ideally you'd want Perth. So, is it more about I want to fight in Perth, or I'll go anywhere uh, to fight Moreno or any of the top guys? Yeah, I think only really two places make sense to fight Moreno. So, it's either Perth, because I'm going to have the home crowd. It's going to be absolutely massive fighting in Perth um, and then yeah UFC Noche or whatever at the Sphere I go it'll be his his not home crowd but it'll be like a home crowd for him and I'll be in enemy territory so I think either of those makes sense and um, it'll be huge. What do you make of flyweight champion Alexander Pantoja because I was talking about how the title has changed hands quite a bit back and forth over the years do you feel like he's the number one flyweight right now? Yeah I mean he got uh, until I beat Snell and put him outside the top 10. I think he had nine wins of the current top 10. So, I mean, it's hard to argue that he's not the best guy in the division. Um, so, yeah, he's a really good fighter. Obviously, his bread and butter is beating people with pressure and taking people's back, that sort of thing. His striking isn't bad, but it does get sloppy pretty quickly. Like, he, again, he pushes so hard that it's hard for him not to get tired. So, I think he's very exploitable. Um, that's what makes it fun. It's going to be a tough fight. It's going to be a hard fight. It's going to be fun for sure. 
do you feel when you get there to the title shot, which could be very soon, that he'd still be the champion? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think so. I don't see who beats him right now. Again, I think the only fight really to make would be Mikhaev and him. I don't think Mikhaev beats him. As I said, the guys who I think are the toughest matchup for him, it could be like Albazi or something like that. They're injured at the moment. So, um, yeah, I think he'll be there when I eventually get there. How would you, how, like, how much of a chance would you give Mokayev against Pantoja? Do you think he could go in there and, and beat him, or do you feel like Pantoja beats him easily? I think they'll both go really, really hard early, and Mokayev's technical striking and um, ability will really let him let him down and some of his entries looked really bad last time once he got tired so he'll start to wilt and Pantoja will finish him in some way and you've been a, a champion at eternal mma if you get moreno next or whoever it is a top ranked contender would you rather it be a five round fight potentially a main main event so you can get that, those five rounds before a title fight um five rounds is really hard so I don't know. I mean, I'm definitely, if they book it, I'm happy to fight five rounds. I don't know. I don't know on that one. Give me whatever. I'll just say yes to whatever. I don't care. But it is going to be, less so that the fight's going to be, the fight's obviously going to be hard for five rounds, but the training camp's going to suck. And that's, um, <laughs> that's the worst part. No, I like the honest answer. And uh, <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, Moreno, uh, how do you feel like you match up against him? And do you feel like I know he's a, on a two fight losing streak? It's close fights, very close fights, both of them. But do you think he's declined a little bit, or do you feel like he's still as dangerous as he's always been? Um, his last performance was really average. Um, I just I'm chalking that up to fighting Roval, who's really tall. So I'm going to say that he's as dangerous as he's ever been but his last performance wasn't great so we'll see only time will tell i'll leave you with one more team i appreciate your time how do you envision kind of the at the end of 2024 where where will steve ursic be at the end of 2024 i'll be yeah champion of the world all right there you have it well you had a very impressive performance against match now like i said you know reading the the, the buzz online actually one last one i lied uh i saw something they, uh where they call you kind of the instagram stalker you were just talking about uh mokai's 1.1 <laughs> yes. million, yeah. 1. 1 million followers yeah. so uh what is it exactly that you like to look at when it comes to fighters is it just the fight related stuff or is it just everything Do you just like to get a good gauge of what they're like yeah i like to get a gauge so mostly it is about the fight related stuff but Obviously, if you find out they're a bit of an idiot or a bit of a weirdo, it's easier to punch them in the face. So um, I have looked up a few people and all I could get over, I couldn't get over how much of a douche they seemed online and that's made it easier for me. But um, yeah, mostly fight-related stuff. How about Moreno? What, what, what did you gauge out of his Instagram? Um, look, I don't like the Lego stuff. So um, <laughs> he's a very nice person. Um, I don't want to see my champion of the world playing with Legos. <laughs> All right, there you have it. That, that, that's the, that'll be the, the, the headline. <laughs> no, worries. no worries. All right, Steve, I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much. Again, congratulations on a great performance. I'm really looking forward to seeing what's next for you. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate, uh, appreciate you having me.